time now for our press review today. And for that, I'm joined in the studio by Erin Agunke. Hi, Erin. Hi, Axie. Uh, you're starting with the uh, ever deteriorating situation in Gaza today. Yeah, that's right. French paper Liberation this morning headlines on bombings in Gaza, unprecedented, without limits and merciless. Uh, who would have thought that the Gaza Strip would resemble emblematic cities like Aleppo or Mariupol, the editorial wonders. And yet Israel's bombing campaign is shaping up to be one of the worst in the 21st century, given its intensity. The paper uh, attributes the devastation in part to Israel's use of artificial intelligence to achieve its stated objective of destroying Hamas. Now, AI is precisely what Le Monde focuses on there on the left in today's edition, uh, how Israel is using it to identify and strike targets, no matter how extensive the, quote, collateral damage, as it, as it says. That's a euphemism, obviously, for innocent civilians killed. Uh, the software has been, the software it's been using, rather, is dubbed Habsora, or the gospel, and it basically increases the number of targets for strikes, part of why Israel has hit, hit some 15,000 targets on the territory in the first 35 days of this latest conflict, and that's compared to just five to 6,000 max during the first 51 days of its last operation in Gaza in 2014. Experts quoted in the piece saying that this software has essentially turned Gaza into a large-scale experiment for the use of AI uh, in active war zones. And now in a lot of speculation uh, today, the scale of violence we're seeing in Gaza uh, seems to go beyond Israel's stated uh, goal of destroying Hamas. Yeah, that's right. That is the gist of an opinion piece in the British paper The Guardian uh, by a professor of peace studies today. Now, he argues that Israel's approach to war, known as Dahia, the Dahia Doctrine, uh, involves the disproportionate use of force uh, to destroy key infrastructure and the economy, again, no matter how many innocent civilians are, are killed. The piece says that this, doc, this doctrine or originated in the 2006 Lebanon war, during which, which saw the destruction of entire villages if they were deemed to be the site of rocket fi fire, the killing of about 1,000 civilians, a third of which uh, were children. Now, again, the goal of this doctrine, and this is according to uh, Israeli research, researchers, is to achieve a sustained deterrent impact. But the editorial in this piece, Professor Paul Rogers says that this is doomed to fail, that Hamas will emerge either in different form or simply strengthened. And that's what the Washington Post then, the American paper, focuses on uh, this morning. Uh, it's, it says that uh, Hamas is far from being destroyed, Israel says, for now that it's killed some 5,000 uh, militants since the start of the war. But Hamas's estimated 30,000 strong military wing remains very well intact. And of course, this is all coming at a very heavy price for Palestinians, at least 16,000 killed uh, since the start, including 5,000 children. That, of course, according to uh, Gazan authorities. Meanwhile, uh, Aaron, in other news, uh, the OECD's 2022 PISA assessments on education systems were published yesterday. Uh, the results, uh, has to be said, rather unflattering for France. Yeah, well, the good news, Haxi, is that France is still comfortably within the average of OECD countries, but results in several domains, as Le Parisien tells us, uh, are on the decline, especially mathematics, which decreased by 21 points, and written comprehension, which decreased by 19 points. Uh, now, these are among France's worst results ever since the start of these PISA surveys. Libération, for its part, I think, really importantly, there on the, on the bottom left, focuses on a specific recurring theme for France in these surveys, and that is deep-seated inequality in the education system. Students from disadvantaged socioeconomic backgrounds are a whopping 10 times more likely to have unfavorable results on the PISA test than those from advantaged backgrounds. One of the, That's one of the worst of such results in OECD countries. Now, Libération Libération says that France continues to ignore that reality. Initially, in the early 2000s, the country criticized PISA, PISA's methodology, even though the vast majority of countries uh, agreed that it's a perfectly reasonable uh, and balanced methodology, before later simply choosing to focus on, uh, on, on its best students instead of trying to kind of maximize the educational improvement of the largest possible number. Now, a lot of these inequalities, Haxi, are also uh, related to housing uh, and, and inequality, excuse me, and segregation as well. Well, let's turn now to uh, some U.S. politics. A surprising candidate in the 2024 Republican nomination 
Rising in the polls, Erin. Yeah, that would be Nikki Haley. Now, she has had a strong performance in the first three debates. She even bagged an endorsement from uh, a conservative political ag advocacy group, uh, Americans for Prosperity Action, last week, as The Washington Post tells us today. It's still early. She's just barely hit double digits, uh, but she's improving modestly. And a lot of recent coverage about her has essentially been centering on the idea that she is perhaps the best alternative to Donald Trump uh, in this round. Now, the NY, the New York Times, excuse me, really charts her journey uh, with Trump from critic to defender and back, as the paper puts it. Now, she started by initially criticizing his Muslim ban in 2017 before eventually uh, joining his administration, of course. She's now trying to re persuade Republican voters again to choose her instead of Donald Trump. Now, she has largely avoided, as most have, sparring with Donald Trump in public, uh, especially as he still holds a double-digit lead. He, lead. He is by far the front runner. Uh, she's defended her stance uh, about the former president, though, and she's saying that it's Trump who's changed, not her. She cites the 2021 Capitol riots and his refusal uh, to concede the 2020 election. We, of course, will see uh, if this works with voters or not. And Erin, you're finishing uh, with a rather unorthodox punishment from a U.S. judge. Yeah, this is fun. It all started with an irate customer hurling a chicken burrito bowl at employee Emily Russell, uh, who's the store manager of a Chipotle fast food restaurant in the state of Ohio. And it's all because the offender, Rosemary, simply did not get her order the way that she liked it. Now, she was initially ordered to pay a fine and serve a 180-day uh, jail term with 60 days suspended. But instead, the judge made a highly unusual usual proposition, and that was that she could cut her sentence by 60 days uh, in exchange for working 20 hours per week at any fast food restaurant that she chose or got hired at for two months. Now, uh, she agreed, and this, I think, gives legal meaning to, to walking in somebody else's shoes. I must say it's certainly uh, more efficient uh, than serving months in, in prison. Eye for an eye retribution in the McDonald's age. <laughs> Erin Agunke with today's uh, International Press. Thank you very much. Well, that's all we have time for right now, but do stay tuned. There's more world news coming up in just a few minutes' time here on France 24.